Here we've been talking about the nature of light and how we know it's a particle or a wave, but now we need to know how we collect the light and study it. What tools do we use for astronomy? Well, there are all kinds of different tools we can use, but the best thing to do is figure out a way to use light. Telescopes collect more light than we can with our eyes, so why not use those? They bring more light to focus, you can attach a special equipment to them, and they increase the time exposure for light collection because they can just keep looking. For us, we only collect light through our pupils, and that only exposes our retina for a certain amount of time, but when we're talking about telescope, we can leave that telescope open all night. Mm -hmm. And it collects more light, too. In order to understand how telescopes work, we first have to look at some of the physical laws that they obey. And the first and the easiest one is known as the law of reflection. It is probably the easiest law that we'll ever see. So you can see that we've got the uh, red laser light here. And I'm shooting it off the ground right now. And you can see that it bounces off of something on the ground and up to my hand. Same thing with the green laser light, shooting that onto the tabletop, and there is a mirror there, and we can see that there is a reflection, but why can't I see how it reflects? Well, you have to have light rays coming directly to your eyes, and the light rays going across the screen is not coming at the screen, so you can't see a light moving across the screen. No, but now you can. So, introducing that fog again, we can see that the photons are being reflected on the way down, and what do you notice about the light now? I notice that the angles on each side um, of the reflective surface are the same. So the angle that it hits that mirror at seems to be the angle that it reflects away at. Even if I shoot straight down on the mirror, it seems to shoot straight back up. So angle of incidence equals angle of reflection? So the, like I said, the easiest law you'll ever know. So all mirrors reflect light according to this law whether it's flat or whether the mirror is curved. So now I have light shining off a curved mirror and when we shoot this laser beam off of the curved mirror you can see that it bounces back either straight towards me like we saw before with the flat mirror or if I shoot it up towards the top of the curve where's that light going? Toward the floor. And if I shoot towards the bottom of the mirror it's actually shooting towards the roof. So if I had multiple rays of light shining on this curved mirror, they all seem to be pointing to one specific spot. Right, they seem to have a focus. Focus the light into a certain region and use detectors at that region to look at the focused light. You might even call it a focal point. In this image we've got the <coughs> light rays doing the same thing coming in in a straight line in at the mirror in this case for a reflective telescope and the reflective telescope is going to bounce the light toward the center point and that, at that point, we once again would want to place our eyepiece to be able to see the image. So if you stand inside this telescope, you could actually be at the primary focus. Mm -hmm. so that'd have to be a really big optical telescope. They make them really big. So in this demonstration here, you can see I've got a curved mirror again that will focus the light to a certain point. And if we're beyond that focal point, you can see that you and my computer and everything are upside down. Yeah, there but, I am back there standing on my head. But as I walk towards the camera, eventually we get past the focal point and you can see something happens to the image. The image actually flips around and now we're seeing my computer upright. When we use mirrors for telescopes, there's many different ways we can set up those telescopes. But what are we seeing here? Well, we're seeing is rays of light coming into what you would call the aperture of the telescope or the opening. It hits the mirror and is then focused to a point right in the center of the telescope. Since you can't stand inside your telescope, you'd have to actually send that light somewhere else. So that's where the Newtonian has a secondary mirror that reflects it off to the side. Uh, the Cassegrain has a secondary mirror that shoots it out the back. And that last one down there has looks like three mirrors inside of it so that you can actually send the focus uh, down towards the bottom of the telescope instead of near the top. But they're all using that same principle, angle of reflection equals angle of incidence, and they're sending it to a focal point. And that's where we see the in-focus image. But not all telescopes use mirrors. No, some of them actually use lenses. So what we have to do is talk about light refraction. And what I mean by refraction is that light will bend as it moves through a medium, meaning water, air, glass, something other than a vacuum. And the reason light bends is because it starts to slow down. We've all seen straws seem to bend when you put them into a glass of water. So my demo for refraction here shows the laser going right through a piece of glass. 
and you can see if I shoot straight onto the piece of glass, that light seems to pass right on through like nothing ever happened. So it still just goes in a straight line. Really nothing exciting about that. But when I start shooting this light at an angle, what are we seeing? Oh my goodness, it's going through, it's reflecting, it's doing all kinds of stuff, but it's definitely bending as it passes through that glass. So right there you can see that green beam bent. Instead of heading straight up and to the right, it bent more horizontal. But as soon as it came back out, what did it do? It changed direction again. So it bends twice because it has now entered a new medium going back into air. So when we have thing, light passing through materials and we have it refracting, we can curve a piece of glass. And if we curve a piece of glass now and shoot the light through, what are we seeing? Well, um, you're aiming it towards the top and it seems to be moving towards the bottom. And as you shoot it towards the bottom, the uh, resultant beam is moving to the top. So they are again finding that focal point. And right through the center, goes straight through the center. Sure does. So all the light is tr trying to focus to one point with a curved piece of glass. This is an example of how light refraction works as the light comes in um, in straight lines into the lens. Uh, you can see that there's light hitting both the top, bottom, and center of the lens. As it passes through the lens, it then will bend the light towards a center point, or the light will just go straight on through, and you'll have a focus. So that's where we want to put our eye to actually see the image where that light comes to a focus. This would be very much like a refracting telescope, which does the same thing uh, that your eye does. Uh, you have a lens in your eye, and they both do this. Through the aperture comes the light, it bends as it hits the lens, and is focused for an eyepiece to magnify it. And when your eye, once the light hits the eyepiece, it then starts to bend as it heads towards your eye, and your eye does the further bending to focus it where? On your retina. So in the back of your eye is where you want the light to be fo in focus, unless you're like us and defective with our eyes. We need an extra piece of glass to cause that light to be in focus for our retinas. Really, the two main types of telescopes out there. There's using glass with refracting telescopes. That's the one that everyone's used to seeing there on the right. And the bigger cylinders are usually reflecting telescopes because they have big mirrors in them and reflect light towards your eyepiece. There's a refractor which uh, takes the light and uh, bends it as it moves through the lens and focuses it to the eyepiece uh, in much the same way the reflector does, just with a different medium. That would just be telescopes that work in the visible range. We said that there was many, many forms of light from gamma rays all the way through radio waves. What do we have to do to see those? Well, you would have to find a way to reflect those uh, waves of light to a focal point. So here's the same demonstration we did before with the curved mirror, but now in the infrared, and you can actually see that I can see you again, upside down. There I am, standing on my head. And then I go too close, and now I can see the camera. Mm -hmm. Right side up, and then it flips again. So as you cross the threshold of that focal uh, point, uh, the image flips. We were looking at infrared there, and infrared light acted the same as visible light. It sure did. It reflected off a mirror, just the same. We can build telescopes that reflect infrared light versus microwave versus radio wave but a big difference with a radio wave is the wavelength is so long so if you look at this image of a radio telescope here this radio telescope has holes through it i can visibly see holes if a beam of radio waves comes in from outer space it actually sees the surface as a big curved mirror it sees it as a very reflective surface and you can see there's a focus right here it's the same as uh, your microwave oven and the screen inside of there. The screen looks like it's open, but for the microwaves, which are larger wavelengths than those screen holes, it can't pass through, so it bounces off. So microwaves stay inside, while visible light from that light bulb comes out and you can actually see your food. Absolutely. If that light bulb goes out, it'll still cook your food. We use different types of telescopes that have different detectors to sense the different wavelengths, the different energies of light, but that opens up the entire universe. Like a future telescope is going to do, the James Webb Space Telescope, that is going to look in the infrared at the universe compared to the Chandra, which looks in X-ray. So know the difference between a reflector and a refractor, which one uses mirrors, which one uses lenses, and how that works. So now we're going to use the information we get from telescopes to understand 
how the universe came to be and where the universe is possibly going.